There are many words circulating the internet these days, as well as conversations about well-being. We talk about being mindful, finding our center, breathing deeply, and this is often seen as coming with a cup of tea or coffee, perhaps taking a break from work or family, or maybe taking a yoga or Tai Chi class. The time and the space to think, be present, and to find calmness within. What if those moments of bliss we are looking for evaporate as soon as we get back into the activities and demands of the day? I'm sure you can identify. Why might the effects not be long lasting and permanent? Now let's consider the talk and support around mental health. Finding tools to engage in when our stress levels get too high or when we feel that we can no longer cope with the activities of the day. Perhaps there are repeating thoughts or scenarios that you can't let go of. Our conscious mind wants to reason them out, control them, eliminate them, but our subconscious mind has a safety pattern. It has a mind of its own. And that pattern might make sense for survival, but it may not make sense for everyday activities. This is when the tools of the wellness trade that bypass conscious reasoning become so powerful and supportive of our everyday challenges. Our guest today has been using the power of EFT or emotional freedom technique for over a decade. Her assistance to clients, students, and family has provided her with a simple, effective, and long-lasting tool to bring harmony and joy back into thoughts, patterns, and daily habits. I've been using the tools myself for several decades and love how quickly and easily I can transform my day and how I can be empowered to create change by taking responsibility for listening to my stress cues and then releasing the stress. I'm excited to hear about Joanna's journey with the tools for emotional release and how she's been able to help others who seek her skills. Let's listen to her description of what she can assist with. Improve your feelings in just minutes or even seconds so that you can feel at ease, full of joy and truly empowered. Learn the simplest and fastest way to control your mindset so you can be free of the imposter syndrome or sabotaging feelings. Don't let your emotions hinder the success you truly deserve in your business and at home. This is for you if you are sick and tired of the exhausting feelings of stress, worry, insecurities, and overwhelm that spread in your body in a matter of seconds. Feelings that you are slowing down, putting a damper on your hard-earned success. You may even feel secretly ashamed or angry of yourself that you haven't been able to resolve the situation on your own. After all, this time is when we are thinking about, from our minds, how we want to be. But don't beat yourself up. You are not alone. And learn the best way to take charge of your feelings for easier success. And here's how we go. You're listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, and this is Season 2, Episode 14. And I'm so delighted to have Joanna Armstrong and sharing feeling success. Welcome, Joanna. How are you? Thank you, Michelle. It's lovely being here. Very nice to, to be able to uh, meet up with you like this and talk about things that really matter for uh, wonderful people that somehow get stuck. They're amazing, amazing individuals. And yet there's something about their feelings that um, stops them from really, truly enjoying their lives. So I'm so happy to be able to talk about that with you today. <laughs> So as I mentioned in, in the preamble about, you know, people taking that time to make a cup of tea, to sit back and relax, we do invite them through the podcast to do the same, to take the time. But then we have this lovely transformation time because we're talking about ways to engage and energetically change. So what have you got in your cup of um, inspiration today? What did you bring? Let's see. Oh, it's hot. So I have a cup of ginger tea with lemon. So it's all natural, no caffeine, and uh, it's supposed to be calming and soothing, and it fits right into the subject of today, actually. And then your mug. Your mug is so beautiful. For those um, who who are on the podcast, you can't see it's it's blue, it's got flowers on it, and it's kind of a whimsical kind of paint design on it. You want to talk about the mug? 
Yes. Um, I have been called to do this work. And um, when I decided to, to really go for it, uh, jump off that cliff of, of security and, and, and job security, um, I decided to um, to take this step and I put down five um, requirements as to where my space, my, my clinic was supposed to be. And uh, within just a few weeks, all these uh, little simple requirements, distance from home, uh, simplicity, access, all these little things um, materialized very, very rapidly. And as I took over the space, the person that had it before left a few things behind. And the color, the branding of these cups matches perfectly with my uh, branding. And it, it felt very much like it was meant to be on even another level. <laughs> so we went fast, it was easy to get, the price was right, everything was right. And the, the last sign was the branding colors. So that was really fun. Isn't that neat? I just love how things come together and then how we use those tools, like particularly mugs, because for me, I'm always trying to find that mug that feels right, um, sets my day. Um, I love I love that story. Um, I have my mug is a, I have this happy face oh. mug. So it's <laughs> it's my mug of sunshine. Um, and oh. this, I'm, I'm showing you the sign that's winking, um, which is kind of that, uh, that spirit, you know, um, quirkiness, I guess, just to bring yes. some fun into it. Um, and inside I, I put, it. I put summer breeze in here and this is from, um, our Cape Breton tea company. This is one that's like a raspberry lemonade. So it has the hints of lemon, mm -hmm. hints of berry. Um, and it, it just makes you feel like you're down at the beach which we're oh. recording this podcast in February. We are definitely not at the beach. <laughs> we have snow on no. the ground <laughs> and we've had freezing rainstorms. So I wanted to capture a little of that sunshine today. So yes, thank you. Good. Thank you. <laughs> and here we say slange when we, uh, when we do a cheer. Is there anything that you say where you live? Oh, now for tea. Uh, but we can say cheers, which is kind of just, you know, well-wishing. Um, and in Sweden, because I'm in Sweden, uh, you say skål. Mm. Beautiful. So we can, you know, wish everyone well by saying skål. Skål. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So let's chat about... Um, I was so intrigued by the title that you chose, trying to offer to people what it is you do for them and how you can support them. So you're known as the emotional success expert. Can you tell me how you got to this line of work? Well, I suppose there's a story there as well. And <laughs> if I uh, will try to make it short, um, I became a seeker after having my children. Uh, my well, my firstborn uh, became the the beginning of trying to find um, the meaning of life. Why and uh, what is it all about? What how what kind of world do I want to um, put my children into? And the environment, what kind of environment? What do I want to share with them on um, a deeper level, on a higher level? So um, in the search, I discovered all kinds of wonderful tools. But because I'm a bit impatient, I'm a bit, um, I, I want easy, simple, uh, soothing, nice, um, quick results for myself as, as a therapist or a coach or a, uh, a healer. Um, I wanted the same for the, the people that come to me and, and are in pain, discomfort. Um, and I wanted a very efficient solution. So um, I basically found EFT. It found me, however you want to express it. 
And um, I have been extremely, extremely happy um, with those those um, solutions that are just that quick, easy, simple, uh, pleasant, um, and and it works really, really well. And it's been working all these years. Um, but then I have started again. Because, I mean, each therapist kind of goes back to themselves uh, trying to um, find out more, more for themselves. It's, it's, it's like a, uh, the person that gives needs to grow in order to be able to give more. So on that journey, I have discovered more spiritual and yet scientific solutions in addition to EFT. So that's in the last few years I've been uh, working and, and incorporating that into EFT. So um, because I'm running my own business, it's all about branding and there's all kinds of business issues um, as well. And I've come to the re realization that it's about success. It's about success the success that most people are looking for uh, and happiness and and all of that become it starts with the emotions so if you're having emo emotions that aren't working so great and not feeling so great it ruins your success so um it starts with the inside whereas so many people try to start with the outside um so that's kind of the short version. <laughs> <laughs> I love it um, because you're right. And that, that was one of the um, parts that I started to talk about as well is how we, you know, we go for the bubble bath. We try to read a good book, get lost in the book, um, watch TV. That's a great way to relax at the end of the day. Um, make a cup of tea and, you know, sit and look out the window, which are all lovely but they don't, they don't change the circumstances. So once you have to turn around and step back into what is your life, you're right back to the same position that you started in. And so that leads you to, um, you want more time to have to relax, yet you still aren't making the headway that you really want. So with that, um, do you wanna talk a little bit about how that, that stress and that worry, how you work with that and, how you can transform that for people? Well, um, I've discovered that stress and worry are sh somewhat shameful feelings. Um, and stress, I guess, people can admit to having. But worry becomes more personal. Worry is not something that you necessarily talk about at work. Uh, or with your colleagues, or with your um, uh, the, the 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 people that you interact with in a business meeting or network meeting, uh, and vulnerability is, in my mind, a layer even deeper inside that you definitely don't share over a cup of coffee with even your closest friends. The the things that bother you the most that are shameful um that you find shameful uh are very difficult to kind of clear out you can complain about the weather you can complain about um the kids you can complain about the husband or your partner but there are certain feelings on the inside that you will not even maybe admit to having for yourself you do everything you can to to push away or ignore or um uh, work away or start running or you start creating coping mechanisms that push it down because you don't even want to handle it but with time these stresses worries um your in most intimate uh, delicate feelings will bubble up. They will want to um, be cleared out. They really, really want to be cleared out. 
Um, they don't want to be inside of you bothering you. Um, but because you don't want to talk to them, you're, you're pushing them down. Deep, deep, um, uh, yeah, depression is pressing something down away. Um, so just talking about these things with your friends or your therapist or, you know, um, helps a bit. It does make things feel a bit better. But not necessarily, you don't necessarily reach the core. I call my version happier EFT because I'm adding joy, uh, um, joy uh, um, techniques, uh, specific, and 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 on purpose. Um, emotion improvements as opposed to emotion relief um and so yes i use eft uh, where you use the body to heal the mind or the thoughts or the feelings so you use entire physique um you tap on acupuncture or acupressure points or acu points um in order to reach what's um, stagnated, what has um, become hardened, uh, pressed down so much that um, it's it's um, very, very difficult with your own volition to release and relieve and clear out. Um, so you work with your body to reach the mind and then with my happier EFT, I add particular joy techniques uh, to get there even faster or even uh, in a more pleasurable way. Um, yes. <laughs> Was that the answer to your question? Yeah. And so then, um, so you, happier EFT, right? That's what you said? Okay. So do you want to dive into a little bit of how that came to be. I understand you added more techniques in and more studying to go with the EFT. So how did you come up with the idea of that happier EFT? I love it. Well, um, I had been working with EFT and clients for probably five, six, let's say eight years. Um, and I was asking for even better tools, even um, cause EFT is really, really good, but most people and my clients, um, they came to relieve something not so nice. They came to get rid of that darkness or discomfort or, um, the, the wrong, they were trying to get rid of what was wrong. And then once they got rid of it, they got to this kind of neutral place, um, so I was wondering and asking the universe if there was something even better. I wasn't satisfied with just kind of getting back to normal. And and for most of us, we can relate to normal being this kind of neutral, nice, yeah, you know, nothing is wrong kind of a place. But was there something more? So when I started asking this question, I started getting... Um, my own connection to some sort of a higher space feeling intuition um god whatever you want to call it that you relate to being higher better more wonderful beautiful um and i started connecting to that and in seconds i could just change the state of just kind of yeah being okay with life to this magnificent, beautiful uh, feeling of of bliss that that would be the best, highest, uh, most magnificent word that I can think of bliss, and um, it wasn't difficult getting there. Once you put yourself in the body, in your mind, you align uh, in a particular way. Um, and you can just get there immediately. 
and your whole reality shifts and the mundane things of everyday life um, start sparkling, start becoming beautiful. Um, worries don't bother you. You know, the everyday worries that you wouldn't seek help for, but the annoyances, the, the little bothers of everyday life that you wouldn't necessarily make a big deal out of, but they don't necessarily make your life great. So all of that vanished. And I also noticed that this state, this beautiful place of being, living, uh, I call it heaven on earth, living heaven on earth, because that's my vision or word explanation for it, um, cleared away the darkness, the really bad, um, difficult issues um, of um, questioning, uh, being dissatisfied, worrying, uh, what's going to happen, because um, things happen to everyone. But the, the, the darkness vanished when I allowed myself um, to be in this beautiful space. Um, so I got help cleaning out things. So instead of working on the things, I put myself up here and this other stuff disappeared, got lighter, easier to clean out. Um, and it's been, it's been a struggle. And that sounds weird to say, because <laughs> it's so easy that people don't believe it. They don't think that it can be this easy. Uh, and that belief is actually the belief that makes it not possible. So it's a it's a funny uh, um, truth where things are supposed to be easy, and human bodies, people, our mindset is for some reason set so that it's supposed to be difficult it's supposed to be complicated it has to be a technique it has to be you know uh but in reality it's supposed to be easy mm -hmm. isn't that an amazing statement to be able to make when you think about it all of it because all of us get into the work because we have a struggle of some sort mm -hmm. and we're trying to solve mm -hmm. it we haven't found the answer to solve it so eventually you you come across what works but then to know that it's easy, we didn't have to have it so hard. It's just, I know people listening thinking there's no way. Um, and I remember when I lost, um, I had so much emotion pocketed in my feet, I lost the ability to walk on them. And I was at a dance workshop, unable to dance. I was participating Ooh. horribly, but, you know, but from the side and the instructor who was in her 60s at that time was saying she had the privilege of all of her injuries. And I was thinking, there's no way. In the pain I'm in, there's no way. And then to discover those techniques could erase all of those pieces and I could have actual joy in my feet, unheard of. But yet, when you go but down to the, the tool, yeah, very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love, I love how you thought about that space of, because a lot of times people do sit at that neutral kind of place. There's not too much bothering them. They're not quite sure where they want to go, but that's okay because status quo is good, <laughs> opposed to struggle, but then not to, to know how to go to that next place where, where the day does sparkle, where you do see the joy when you look out the window and it's, it's not just snow on the ground. It's actually here. It's like, um, I, I call them diamonds because when the sun shines on the snow, there's these amazing diamonds that happened in Cape Breton. Um, I didn't always see that out in the West, but when, when you see that, that just reminds you of the beauty of nature, but you can see it from that perspective rather than, Oh, it's another winter day. Oh, the snow is still on the ground. How much longer till spring? <laughs> those kinds of comments that come back. Um, yeah, and the amazing thing about those um, 
you put like a magical word on the snow and the magical feeling is a healing feeling. So for so many years now, magic in, in our part of the world anyway, has been somewhat erased, has been um, uh, gotten rid of at the price of being um, uh, clever and capable and uh, having a t title, educated. Um, but when it comes to the simplicity that we spoke of, the magical feeling of feeling that something is thrilling and exciting, that feeling heals your body. So it's not magic, woo-woo, uh, silly, um, not practical or serious or real. It is real. Um, and more and more science shows that it is real. More and more science is, is showing that you should imagine more you should pretend more you should dream more uh, because the the love hormones oxytocin starts spreading in your body and healing your cells and the actual and factual things so um i love how you you know created or or, or found a beautiful name for the snow crystals <laughs> really really nice I always have to find the diamond in the day, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. Um, people, lots of people have challenges with sleep. And I hear lots about, um, you know, can't go to sleep or uh, they get to sleep, but then they're awake early. Um, they haven't had enough sleep. That's a common phrase that people use. It. So I haven't had enough sleep, um, even though they may have gone to bed at a good time and they had the opportunity for a good eight hours, it still doesn't feel like they've had rest when they get up. Can you talk a little bit about how you've worked with clients with those kinds of issues and uh, the results you've had? I have, um, I'm sorry, I need to cough. <laughs> I've had clients um, come in and they've been struggling with sleep for uh, years often. And um, sleep is not just about um, putting a person through an EFT session because sleep has to do with what you eat and how you behave as well. So I will look at um, what the people, uh, the, the, the person that comes to me, what they eat, what they drink, uh, how they behave, what time of the day they go to sleep. Um, if they take naps, and then we do um, a particular adjusted EFT session because EFT tapping, when you tap on these um, acupuncture points, it can uh, energize you. Sometimes it calms you down, but sometimes it energize you, energizes you. So uh, I have um, a, a particular way of calming the person down and then I have them envision themselves being in bed and struggling and then um, seeing themselves healing and feeling better. Well, in this case, feeling more tired and calm and relaxed, which oftentimes they're not feeling, although they're laying in bed and it's time to sleep. Uh, they're they're bothered by something that happened during the day, some some issues going on in their lives, um, stress, worry, planning. Uh, the more ambitious the person is, the more easy it is for them to fall into this trap of bringing the day with them into bed. And letting go of that is not all that simple. Um, but EFT is actually several techniques in one. I say that it's the best, uh, the, the most tasty raisins. I don't know if this is Swinglish. <laughs> uh, the, the tastiest raisins in from many cakes. So EFT has picked like the best bits. And um, so you 
feel and sense in your whole body, you visualize, that's one of the techniques. And by visualizing and feeling the calmness, um, using EMDR to uh, you end up in the feeling and it's the feeling that puts you to sleep. So once you've cleared out the mind, um, you're not full of caffeine or sugar, for example, bread maybe, um, you feel, you allow yourself to feel, you allow yourself not to bring the issues with you. You allow yourself um, to step back. And stepping back is very, very difficult for the modern person. Uh, the more ambitious, the, the the business owner, the CEO, the, the entrepreneur, that is so difficult because their whole being, DNA, is about doing, achieving, and sleep is everything but doing and achieving. So it's it's a very experiential treatment where you feel and see and realize that oh okay I can do this when I'm at home in bed as well so people get um very uh, quick results I'd say the average uh, um, therapy or treatment is is four sessions and people can go back to sleep and and sleep soundly and uh, you know get their good nights uh, refreshing sleep. And you mentioned EM, EMDR. You just want to talk just for a moment for those people that heard those four little initials, <laughs> what that means, just so they know. Yes, um, it's eye, eye movement, because you move your eye, desensitization and reprogramming. When I'm, I'm the perfect example of when I need to access a part of my brain, when I want to access a memory or I'm trying to, to phrase something clearly and succinctly, I, again, I look down to access something. And when you have um, an issue, when you have something that bothers you, uh, you're thinking, uh, stress is going on, you're planning, you want to solve something uh, for the future, the next day, whatnot. Uh, so you're processing all of that. And all of this activity is going on. It's the chattering mind. or um, And you can, with the eye movements, uh, basically rub away the need to, to be processing. You can calm down all this thinking that is going on um, as you're um, you're rubbing away the, the bother with your eyes. I mean, that's that's the most layman person uh, <laughs> explanation I can think of. Um, so you use these movements, you move your eyes, you circle um, your eyes, and you're, you're changing the, the intensity the, the 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 pain or the need to solve something because it can be painful to let go people that try to meditate if you've ever tried to meditate you know how painful it is to sit still and calm your mind whereas here you're actually doing something and the mind is being calmed down so that you can go into the body and feel the soothing calmness in order to fall over into the sleep zone, the sleep realm. Um, just as you were saying that, I was thinking about, because I, I don't like to sit and meditate just with no movement. My body, when it wants to relax, likes the movement. It enjoys that movement. So that's why I do Tai Chi, which is moving meditation. But just as you were explaining the eyes, I was thinking, oh, I, you know, I do tell my students about the eye scanning that happens while we're doing Tai Chi, but it never occurred to me the back part of what those eyes were doing. I wasn't thinking in terms of the background of EMDR and what it 
what it supports and um, uh, where the, the eyes really take us. So thank you for that because I hadn't, hadn't thought about it from that perspective. Um, so it was a good description. And it actually, they see in brain scans how your thoughts take different paths. Because normally you would be thinking, oh, I have to fix this. I have to solve this. My little child or uh, my colleague at work or my boss or uh, I have to get this business off, off the ground. I have to. And your thinking takes certain paths in the brain. But when you do this and you calm it down, you soothe it, all of a sudden the, the thoughts are going another way in your brain. Oh, maybe I don't have to do it now. Maybe I can... Um, take a long weekend. I deserve to take a break from trying to figure this out, et cetera, et cetera. You, you create, you, you allow for better solutions, um, maybe more intuitive solutions and, and um, more honest and true to yourself solutions, uh, which is really, really beautiful that you, when you get rid of this monkey mind, you, via the feelings, find uh what you really need to be doing mm -hmm. on a better yeah. better level easier more effective uh, nicer whatever it is yeah yeah um let's shift conversation just a little bit to a topic that's been coming up i think the the buzzwords have been more and more about the imposter syndrome people not believing in themselves that they are who they are or the title that they carry and that they have the experience or expertise that people are looking to them for. And so how that's really causing some distress for people. Can you talk a little bit about how you work with clients in that case? Well, um, clients that are managers or uh, leaders or... Um, uh, I mean, you can be leader of your family, people that feel that they need to do something well-meaning. They have all kinds of thoughts and rules that they have either heard that you need to do this, you need to be like this, you need to have these qualifications, you need to be this clever and this, this capable. Um, and then based on their own background and however they grew up and whatever they heard as a child, um, you need to uh, be the best. You need to never be upset, never complain, never show weakness. Uh, there's all kinds of rules that people have. Uh, very, very smart and clever and um, highly positioned people. Um, and they start hurting on the inside. Um, so they don't necessarily know why they're hurting. Um, they blame the marriage, the kids, the house, the car, need to get another one, a better one. Uh, but they come here because they, they can't take it anymore. It's, it's too painful being them themselves. Like their life is not working. Their life puzzle isn't working in spite of all this outer success that they're having so um we take an honest look and oftentimes they don't even want to admit this because the higher up you are the more you need to um, um not show weakness and you need to lead people and you need to lead by example and a lot of well-meaning people think that they should hold it together, that that is the solution to um, success and showing the coworkers how to do things better. Um, but in my world, what I see, what I help people discover is that that's not true. You, you need to let yourself go. You need to let your hair down. You need to admit that things aren't working out, I made a mistake. All these, these so-called um, wrong traits that 
people think of themselves of ha as having, they're right. Because there's signals that something isn't working, that you have put a lid on your dreams and hopes and wishes to, to maybe move, change countries, um, simplify your life, uh, selling everything that is, 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 is uh, uh, calling your attention and stealing your time. And you just want to be on that beach, uh, drinking Michelle's tea and just dreaming. And um, so oftentimes it's about letting the person, helping the person, admitting um, to something deeper, a dream, a wish, a, a desire, um, and understanding that that is not, not wrong. It's not wrong being sensitive. I get um, highly sensitive people coming here. Uh, they're not wrong that they get sad about things that they're not supposed to, according to you know, all these rules and regulations out there. Uh, softness is a strength. And when they accept that, that they are okay being soft or gentle or um, not so efficient and not so accurate, that there's a better path for them that isn't accurate. Not everyone has to be accurate. Not everyone has to be uh, detail-minded. Um, they become uh, a free person. They can be free to be themselves. The bothers don't bother them. Issues with people and coworkers and, and don't bother them. Um, so again, it's about going inwards to get a better outwards. Um, your success um, and, and, and your desire for the successes that you thought you needed changes when you see that simplicity and ease trumps the new car or the, the, the better house or the new curtains or um, more money in the bank account. I'm not saying those are wrong, but if you start with being in the right place, no matter what, then everything else is a bonus as opposed to chasing after certain specifics, you um, you will be happy, very happy, extremely happy in a tiny house. And you won't have to worry about mortgages. You won't have to worry about, um, you know, uh, having to repair this big structure constantly. You have a tiny house. I'm not saying everyone, it, 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 I'm not saying the tiny houses are, are the success, uh, you know, uh, formula, mm -hmm. but it's, it's about finding out what's the success without things for you. Do I want to be by the beach? Do I want to be in the mountains? Where do I want to be? Why? And most most everything is about letting go and backing away and um, allowing yourself to see your truth. Letting your truth come to you and talk to you and speak to you so you can follow that as opposed to the rules of society or the rules of how to, you know, be successful on paper or pictures or um, items, possessions. So everything goes back to the authentic feeling. So I help people mm -hmm. get there uh, in a very soothing, pleasurable. Um, sometimes there's a tear, uh, but you don't need to be bawling your eyes out to get these shifts and, and um, ease and, and direction, uh, sense of purpose, all these wonderfully big words that are really very, very simple. What? makes your heart sing. It's, it's really about that. Beautiful. Um, we've talked about EFT. We've talked about the eye movements. Do you want to just lead us through a little something that can kind of illustrate how a um, mini session might work or 
or even something that people could use as a daily little piece just to bring that sparkle back into their day? I would um, like to ask whoever's watching us um, to maybe settle down in, in their seat uh, more comfortably, more grounded, shake you know the day off or um, things that they need to do, shake it off a little bit uh, to feel the body, close the eyes to be able to sense what's going on. It's easier to sense when you close your eyes. And just um, do a little micro tapping, uh, which involves just the head and the chest. There are other points that you can tap, but just for the, the simplicity and ease, um, something that you know the viewer can bring with them. Um, if, if the person, I mean, I'll talk to you, Michelle. If you just tap on your head, um, and feel so top, the tap. Top, top and of center? Head. Yeah. And there are a few acupuncture points up here. So if you just tap on top of your head and just feel it, because all emotional improvement has to do with feelings and releasing whatever doesn't sit right, feel right. But it's also about this joy and pleasure. So try to set good about tapping lightly, not hard. It's not supposed to be painful at all. And then sense what it feels like to tap between um, the um, eye. Well, at the beginning of each eyebrow, there's an acupuncture point. So if you tap. Yeah. And then if you tap on the outside of your eye socket, and there's two points there. So you kind of tap on the edge of your um, skull. There's a hole that the eye sits in. So on the edge of that skull part. And, and so you've got in, two fingers, two fingers there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or you can just tap up and down. Um, and then underneath the eye, on top of the bone, the edge of your eye socket, you could say, and just feel the feeling. So many of us don't feel, we just do. <laughs> but it's about feeling what's nice about this. And if you close your eyes, you can sense it better, easier. And under the nose, there's a, an acupuncture point there. And just feel it. So You're many on the people top do. of your lip this time. Yes, top of the lip. There's a little okay. um, dent, indentation. And then there's an indentation under your lips. And just feel the feeling. Just oh. allow yourself to feel what's nice about this little tap. And then collarbones. So you, the collarbones, like or below the collarbones, I guess. And the you're coming straight down from the throat. Yes. So not bones under your face. So you just go from the top and down. You follow the the, the facial structure. And then there are acupuncture points in the middle of your chest, between the, the, the breasts. Men and women have breasts in the middle of the chest. There are several points, so you can tap a little up and down and just sense. Close your eyes to sense and feel more. It's easier to, to feel the nuances when you close your eyes. And put your hand down. Just a little micro tapping and exhale and see where that puts you. See if that shifts anything. See if that makes you think of something easier, lighter, more pleasurable. And exhale and ground yourself in the body. So if you do this several times, you can feel 
how your whole body starts releasing and relaxing. And when you allow this release and relaxation, your the so-called love hormones, oxytocin, starts flowing. And it actually physically, factually starts healing, restoring the body, the cells. Um, so this is a very quick little uh, practice that you can do um, at your work desk. Uh, you can uh, sit in front of a beautiful view. You have might have a, a view outside of your window that you can focus in, and and um, take in. So you can add different elements to make it even nicer, even more pleasurable um, to put yourself in this state of relaxation, release, um, and healing. So that would be the quickest way of, of tapping down the face. And if you forget where the uh, points were, just tap wherever you want because um, there are acupuncture points um, everywhere, all over your body. So don't don't get stuck on how was it I was supposed to do it. Just feel the feeling of tapping it down and exhale and release and sense where you feel pleasure. And again, as I mentioned before, this pleasure feeling will help you solve difficulties. So this is a very simple, simplistic micro version that you can um, have with you whenever you need. And it's interesting. I know when people will be thinking about um, solving challenges, making a decision, um, and when everything kind of gets bottled up, it's really hard to make that decision, but to realize it's just a, a, that, that transformation allows for the space for the decision to, to be there rather than all the other thoughts that can come flowing in, which can hinder you getting to the, the part that you need in order to make the decision. So it's lovely to know that, you know, and I would, did that take us less than two minutes? Um, you would be able to be in that position of going, oh, I know exactly what I need to do and off you go. Um, and so many people think, I just don't have time to get to that state, but it actually isn't very long to get there. It's a short trip. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Um, how can they find you, Joanna? What is it, where's your contact information? Uh, the simplest way to find me is to go to blissyjoy.com. That's blissy with a Y. Uh, so blissyjoy, also with a Y, <laughs> two Y's, uh, dot com. And I post uh, news and um, uh, scientific findings and research and courses and whatever is, is up next. So um, there's always something that, uh, someone can use uh, and, and get help. I have free uh, resources if someone wants even more help. Um, I uh, run groups. I do individual coaching. So whatever fits and whatever the person um, listening would like help with, um, they can take a look there and see if, if something speaks to them. Perfect. And you do your work online as well. So Yes. So where people are located isn't a barrier. Um, no. Perfect. Beautiful. Um, to finish off today, I always like to finish with some kind of movement to recommend people just to get them uh, away from their desks or out of the car, whatever it happens to be that stationary position they put themselves into. What would you recommend today or what's your favorite go-to thing? Well, since I like uh, quick and easy and, and simple, and your cup um, helps me uh, to put a face on it because your your cup was was uh, silly cheeky, um, uh, and people in certain positions and leaders and entrepreneurs and uh, tend to take themselves a bit seriously and they have to show others um, how. Um, uh, 
how good and and uh, strong and important their work is, but they really need to learn to take themselves less seriously. So just shaking it out and making a scrunchy face and like even just sitting, the simplest thing, you don't even have to get up and make space and you don't have to, you know, create any sort of move furnitures or anything. You just crunch up your face and just make it like a really silly face and maybe you like make a silly sound and and shake your body and shake it out maybe you sound like a horse or whatever <laughs> silly you can think of then take a deep breath and notice how things shift and seem simpler and less bothering or bothersome and uh, heavy life is supposed to be light simple joyful uh but negative so called so called negative feelings are not wrong they're messengers so don't scold your negative feelings or um things that don't feel good they're not to be pushed away uh, ignored meet them start uh, taking um contacting them uh, start contacting them um and but do it in this spirit of lightheartedness and joy and heart centeredness. Um, and it will all figure itself out so much easier. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, it's like, um, almost like a shiver went down my back and it was like, Oh, that feels so much better. <laughs> it's like, not that my back was tight because after we did all the tapping, I was sitting taller, felt longer. And then, uh, that little piece just allowed for kind of whatever to just kind of shake off, um, which is what we were doing. But it just did that little shiver almost that comes down. And then it's like, oh, okay, ready to go. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I was going to share um, some movement with my feet, but being that I'm sitting down and you're sitting down, I'm going to go to my hands instead because that's easy to do. And it goes along with that shaking bit. And that's just making a fist and then just popping the hands open for the pow. Mm -hmm. And I often do this with, um, if I'm teaching the preschoolers, then the ABCs and just A, B, C, D, and just run through the alphabet, just letting those hands pop. And that ability to you make that fist, which is holding everything in, but then you have this lovely release that comes out with the hands. And when you open that chakra in the palm, you have that opportunity to expand the way the energy is. Um, we would call that monster fingers in dance. Um, and then you can call them hits if um, you're putting your hands out. So if someone was trying to make a decision as an example, and they're thinking they haven't quite got there yet, and they've maybe run through the tapping pieces to be able to run through the alphabet and just move through it. And if you're standing let your body move with it, shift from foot to foot and kind of just play with it. Again, being silly with it, um, but it's a lovely way to let go. So. Thank you. Okay. So that brings us to the end. Is there anything you think we missed? Well, I don't know if we missed it, but I guess I would like to say it again. Allow yourself to lean back, shake it out, tap it out. Let those feelings tell you something. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be ashamed of them. They're not wrong. Um, they're all there for a reason and they're all there. They can teach you all kinds of wonderful things. Um, don't be afraid to, to connect with your innermost feelings no matter how sensitive or vulnerable they, they they seem to be um it's all good and um just just keep on um letting yourself be more and more you that's what i'd like to say beautiful thank you so much joanna for sharing the time and your expertise and i'm putting a light on taking those feelings that we do have and realizing the support they provide us 
and the way that they lead us to success. And I appreciate the way that you, you bring bliss and joy into the world and into the people that you touch. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And you do great work as well, bringing all this information out. So thank you for doing that. Mm, my pleasure. <laughs> I love I love podcast recording day. It's always always a delight. You've been listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, and this episode has been sponsored by Dance Debut Inc., providing movement programs to create a flourishing lifestyle while achieving your goals and ambitions and enjoying the activities that may be on your bucket list. If you are a desk-bound person spending lots of time at the computer or maybe sitting in your car driving from location to location, consider our programs, which include intention. We have Balancing Business, and you can learn more at dancedebut.com. And also, it's been sponsored by the Cape Breton Tea Company. Bring a little of our countryside and our hospitality into your day with the luxurious cup of the tastes and sounds of Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. And today was Sea Breeze. So, uh, or spring, <laughs> summer breeze, sorry. <laughs> sea breeze, I just wanted to go down to the ocean. <laughs> summer breeze, bringing in the, the idea of the summer. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you, Michelle.